What's up s'mores? I'm Shannon Morse. Welcome to my YouTube channel all about travel and technology and today is a very special video that I was inspired to make by all of my friends who are going to CES for the first time this January. Now I have been going to CES since 2009. This is my 11th year of attending this crazy event. It's a huge event and it's very tiring. So a few years back CES decided to add influencer as one of the options to get a press badge. Now unfortunately a lot of my friends chose not to go and I have my cheat sheet so I'm going to read this because they would be denied as an influencer because CES requirements were 1 million YouTube subscriptions, 500,000 Twitter followers, 500,000 Facebook friends, 300,000 on Instagram, or 300,000 on We Media, which I don't know anybody that uses We Media. So in other words, the options to go as an influencer were ridiculously high and none of my friends worked as a freelancer with any companies that were going to CES and nobody worked as an employee of any of these companies. So they couldn't apply as press under any of those other options. Luckily, I have been working with networks like Discovery Digital and Revision 3. One year I went with Sony, last year I went with my own company. So I've been going in with CES under a like freelancer badge for a very very long time and I've never had an issue as far as applying goes with my numbers even though my numbers are a lot less than those requirements and the reason was because I was applying as a freelancer so if you want to apply as an influencer you would have to have these ridiculously high numbers so Quinn aka snazzy Q over on Twitter he tweeted about it and he was just like, well, I'm not gonna go. And then CES replied. So they said now the requirements are 50,000 or more monthly views on YouTube. That's pretty easy to reach. 35,000 or more Instagram followers or 30,000 or more Twitter followers. Now that's a much more reasonable, awesome opportunity for micro influencers now because now you can get in with those lower numbers. So way to go Quinn for raising this issue with CES and BT dubs. I don't know if you remember the Waymo event but that's where we met. It was cool. You probably don't remember me but that's okay. So to all of my new CES influencer friends who are going to CES for the first time this year because you can finally go with your own YouTube channel. I'm gonna break this down for you because going to CES without any plans whatsoever is going to make it a huge disappointment. Now first, a word of advice for any influencers that are going, please don't be an asshole. And I mean that with all the love in the world for everything that y'all do. I'm an influencer as well, but just, if you're going to this event, it is a trade event, it is a professional event, it's not a party. You don't go onto the show floor drunk or partying and expecting everybody to know who you are. If you do, or if you expect companies to give you a bunch of free stuff, you're going to be very disappointed. Companies spend hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to set up a booth on the show floor at CES. They go in there expecting to have journalists write articles, take pictures, and take videos of their product. They do not go in there trying to sell the product and give you free things while you're there. You might get business cards that allow you to contact people afterwards and ask them for review products, but if you walk out of there expecting people to just give you free laptops and phones, you're, you're not necessarily going to have a great time because you will be disappointed and there is a code of conduct so please respect it. Please don't be an a-hole to everybody else who is there who is just trying to get their jobs done, myself included. I just want to go there and make sure that I am making my sponsor happy and I want to make sure that I'm having a good time. I'm networking and I'm building those relationships because that is what CES is all about is building those relationships and seeing the cool new tech that is out there. Vent over. So I have a bunch of pro tips written down on here as well as some tweets that I wanted to read you, questions from a lot of my followers as well. So CES has almost a quarter million attendees every single year. In 2018, they they had 180,000. So it takes up pretty much the entirety of Vegas. All the hotels get booked up, everything gets booked. All of the convention centers are used in some way, shape or form for CES. There is a map down below, I will link it. That's the same map that you can see right now. Question, have you booked your flight in your hotel yet? If you have not, make sure you do it ASAP. If you don't, you will be very disappointed. So let's talk about prepping for CES. 
First up is a question from at this is tech today. Hi, Brandon. What creators should do, not do, have, not have, how to get it all paid for, and then some, etc. Maybe that's not the right kind of video. Lol. Okay, so what should creators have and not have? I'll do a separate video explaining what I take with me to create all of my YouTube videos whenever I go to CES. Uh, it has kind of morphed over time, but the the backpack that I have now, that's basically my mobile podcast podcasting rig is what I call it, video podcasting that is, uh, that's basically what I take with me to CES every year and it works pretty flawlessly. As far as what creators should do or not do, I'll also break some of that down in this video too, but basically just read the code of conduct, make sure you abide by the rules when you go into CES, and don't be an asshole, uh, be professional. Now he also asked how to get it all paid for as well as Viper. Hi Viper, so at Viper asked, how does one go about finding a sponsor to get to CES? So I found my sponsors for the past couple of years just by like courting them over the year and seeing who might be interested in sponsoring me whenever I go to CES. Uh, once I kind of have a vocal reaction from somebody who is interested in sponsoring me or maybe is going to bring it up to their higher ups, uh, I will actually send them a introduction offer and say, hey, you can sponsor me at any of these different levels and this is what you will get with those sponsorships. And if somebody bites, they bite. If they don't, then I'm not gonna go to CES. But so far, um, that has worked. And I also open it up to negotiations. I also make it very, uh, you know, I'm flexible to make it work with the sponsor because I know that they're spending a lot of money to go to CES as well. So I just wanna make sure that I'm covering all of the things that I need to cover as well as covering like my editor and my camera person and just making sure that it's all worthwhile. I could do a separate video about how I get sponsors on YouTube if that would be helpful because I have been doing it for a long time and I've been selling sponsors through my, my own channel as well as other channels that I've worked with independently. So uh, if you want to see that kind of video, let me know down below. At P. Delahanty asked, hello Patrick by the way, he says, how do you find a hotel that's not too far for a reasonable price. So CES does have hotel room blocks. I would recommend checking that before going anywhere else because a lot of those are refundable if you find a better deal somewhere else before the convention starts. So that's where I always start my, my looking around and I definitely base it on location. Where am I going to be most of that week? If it's gonna be the convention center, I will try to stay near the convention center or along a path that will be easy to get to, whether that's via the monorail or via a route that won't be as crowded. Um, I also base it on if I'm going to be on the strip at all. If I will be on the strip for any kind of events or if I plan to go to the Sands Convention Center, another place where CES happens, then I will likely want to stay closer to the strip maybe even in a hotel that has a monorail station so that I can easily get over to the LVCC and back. Uh, or if I'm going to all the press events, maybe staying near Mandalay Bay or even staying in Mandalay Bay. You do have a lot of options. If you want to save some money though, staying off the strip is so crucial to that. Uh, for the first several years of going to uh, CES, I was staying in a place called like the Royal Hotel or something. I don't know. It was like half a mile from LVCC and we would just walk back and forth between the hotel and there. The nice thing about that, not only is that you can get like walking distance to LVCC, is that it's cheaper, of course, but also a lot of times you don't have to walk through a huge casino to get to your hotel room because these aren't big convention center or big casinos on the strip. They're just little hotels, kind of budget hotels that are off the strip in their own little corner. Now with that said, Patrick also asked, is it better to just grab a cab in Vegas during CES than try to use Lyft? Uh, kind of matters on where and when you are somewhere. So if you're staying off the strip, it's a lot easier to just get an Uber or a Lyft because you can call them to you. However, taxis don't stop in Vegas unless they are pulling up to a hotel or pulling up to a convention center. They have to go to like very specific designated places to be able to pick people up and drop them off. Otherwise they are not allowed to stop along the road. So it's very, very different from like New York City or even San Francisco. So yes, I would use Lyft or Uber if you are staying off the strip. A lot of times if you're staying on the strip, it can be faster to just get a taxi. Uh, I always kind of guesstimate 
based on what I'm seeing outside of the hotel. So as soon as I step outside, I look and I see, is, is are there 50 people in line for a taxi? If there are, maybe it's faster to just get the lift. Is there nobody in line for a taxi and there's three taxis waiting? I'll go ahead and get in line for the taxi because that's not going to take as long. Now I do have some additional tips that I wanted to give you as far as preparing and prepping for CES. Uh, just look at that map that I linked to decide on a hotel that's going to work for you, whether that's a location that's close to the convention center or not. It's a lot of times easier to walk rather than use transportation and that's because the traffic gets so intense. Make sure that you check the schedule on the CES website as well because a lot of things happen before the floor actually opens on Tuesday. So if you are going as press, there are two press days and those are Sunday and Monday. And then the CES show floor actually opens on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and then everybody goes home. So what I will usually do is go on Sunday, stay there for the entire press time, and then when the show floor opens on uh, Tuesday, I will go to one of the show floors on Tuesday, another one of the show floors on Wednesday, and I will book all of my meetings based on where I am going to be. Uh, because trying to transfer from one place to another via either Lyft or Uber or taxi or monorail or even walking is going to take you a very long time. So I have found a lot of times to just stick with one location per day and just don't even leave that convention hall. That's where I'm going to be that's where I'm gonna stay, and that way I'm able to actually see everything that I wanna see. There are also a lot of events that happen alongside all of the press events and the show floor opening. Uh, there's keynotes and there's talks. I've never been to any of those, honestly. I just stay on the show floor or go to suites for meetings with different companies and that's it. Uh, but if you want to, there are some press events that I highly recommend going to because you can cover quite a bit of ground by going to these events. There's CES and Veiled, which you can sign up for once you get your press badge. There's also Digital Experience run by a company called Pepcom, and you have to sign up for that separately. And then there's Showstoppers, and Showstoppers is another one of those events that you have to sign up for separately. Now all of those require a press badge. All of them require some kind of business card or something when you check into them. And they do have like coat racks or they do have a place where you can check your bags so you don't have to bring in all of your gear to these different press events. Now all three of those events are things that take place in big ballrooms and they have like a hundred different booths set up for hundreds of different companies. And all of these companies are startups or they're just getting started or they have something really exciting and really different and unique. And they just wanna show it to press without paying a crap load of money to get their booth onto the show floor in the LVCC. So by just signing up for these events, they're still going to get access to the journalists and to the YouTubers that they want to talk to, but they aren't going to spend that crazy amount of money and just like run out of a budget. These events do sometimes serve alcohol as well as food, and they also have non-alcoholic beverages too, and really good desserts as well. And all of it is free to journalists too, so it's definitely worth going if you want to save a buck and you don't want to spend a bunch of money on food. I definitely go to press events so I can eat because I'm, I, I have a budget, a very strict budget that I have to abide by. So I go there and I like help myself to all sorts of food and it's wonderful. Also for prepping for CES, download the CES app. There is an app for iOS as well as Android and you can download it to kind of figure out what your schedule is, figure out where the map is and where all these different companies are. You can search for a company and it will show you on the map where they are so you can easily map yourself to them because the the entirety of the Las Vegas Convention Center, just it alone, is like 10 football fields or something absolutely ridiculous like that. So it's huge and there's so many people. So it's really, really important to maneuver through and understand where you're trying to get to. So do a little bit of research, like check out the maps and kind of figure out where all your favorite companies are going to be before you actually enter the convention center. And that way you're not just standing there staring at all the beautiful lights from all these beautiful booths and you can get straight to wherever you need to go. Okay, so upon arrival, this is a quick one. One. Uh, the taxi line is generally the fastest whenever you are at the airport. Uh, this is based on if you arrive early like I do. I arrive on Sunday. Generally the taxi line is really short on Sunday because it's only press people arriving at that time. Whenever the show floor actually opens, like the night before and that morning, that taxi line is going to be crazy and then you may want to consider getting an Uber or a Lyft. 
I highly recommend hitting up like CVS or some kind of grocery store before you get to your hotel or check into your hotel and then go to a grocery store off of the strip like go to a locals grocery store because then you pay locals prices and you can get a bunch of bottled water and you can get some fruits and veggies and some healthy snacks without paying those crazy convention center prices i think a bottle of water at the convention center is like six dollars or eight dollars or something absolutely nuts it's just stupid so don't pay those prices you don't have to get a lift or even walk off the strip and go find yourself some local grocery store, read the reviews so you make sure you're going somewhere safe, and get yourself a bunch of groceries that are just ready to go. You can store them in your hotel room. Make sure they're not things that have to be refrigerated. They can all just, you know, stay out. But like, you can do apples and bananas, you can get some croissants, like whatever you want, and just make sure you have it ready so that you can eat that through the day as opposed to eating a bunch of unhealthy like chips and soda and stuff like that at the convention center. Download Lyft and Uber before you get to Las Vegas, very important, and make sure that you get your badge before you do anything else. Uh, pretty much everything at CES requires a badge unless it says in writing somewhere that you don't have to have a badge to get into whatever the event might be. So make sure you get your badge beforehand. There's a bunch of different places you can get your badge pick up because they don't mail the badges out. I usually pick mine up from Mandalay Bay. Um, after I check into my hotel, wherever that might be, I go over to Mandalay Bay and then I can just get my badge and start my press day and everything is right there for me, which makes it so easy. Uh, but if you are checking in a little bit later, then there are a bu bunch of different badge pickups right in front of the convention center and there's also some over at the sands too okay what to wear definitely wear a winter coat uh, it is january it is the desert so some people think that because it is the desert it will still be really hot even though it's january but since it's january it might get warm during the day but it's still gonna be freezing at night it's so cold in vegas at night in january so bring your winter coat you will thank me also, bring two to three pairs of comfortable shoes, whether those are tennis shoes or Rothy's. I'm gonna bring both of those this year, actually. I'm gonna wear my Rothy's on the days that I have like professional meetings with people. And I'm gonna wear my tennis shoes when I'm running around the show floor because they are so comfortable and they're like made for hiking, but they're gonna be perfect on the show floor. I'm so excited. Wear short sleeves inside, kind of like these, and make sure that you bring some kind of lightweight jacket that you can wear inside as well. When you first enter inside, you'll probably find that it's like freezing cold and you might want your jacket because they do pump the AC. But with so many bodies moving around, it does get kind of hot and you are going to be working as a YouTuber with lights. So you will find that it gets hot, especially if you're like carrying around camera gear. So having something that you can remove and having a lightweight bottom layer is so life-saving also deodorant please shower just you know wear deodorant not just for yourself but also for everybody around you please thank you okay as far as scheduling goes make sure that you plan to get anywhere about an hour in advance so say i have a meeting at 4 p.m i want to make sure that i am leaving the convention center at 3 p.m to get to wherever that meeting might be because it's going to take you an hour to get wherever you're trying to go. Make sure you schedule that in because if you don't, you are going to be running behind indefinitely the entire day and you will feel so stressed out because of it. There's nothing you can do about it either. There's traffic constantly everywhere in Vegas, especially during CES. So it's going to be so hard to get anywhere unless you're walking. But then even the map on Google Maps makes everything look like it's so much closer, but it's, it's actually like, miles apart so make sure that you set yourself up for success by giving yourself little hour increments in between each meeting that you have or before any events that you want to get to also the press events do have lines so if you want to see like the AMD press event on Monday make sure you line up for that pretty early because it will get booked and then you will get turned away at the door and then you can't get the footage that you want to get until you have a meeting with them or you get on the show floor and you can actually see their booth. So CES does have shuttles and those are free, completely free to badge holders. However, they are very, very slow. So keep that in mind. The monorail is pretty cheap every single time you use it, but the line can get long. So if you want to use the monorail, keep that in mind too. Walking is totally free and 
you might tire out your legs a little bit, but sometimes it can be the fastest route possible, especially if you walk fast. So you might even like beat the traffic. <laughs> That's a thing. And everything is a lot farther away than it looks. Like check out that Google map and do some directions and just see how far it is because the walking distance is crazy. Oh, and by the way, the casinos are absolutely ridiculously huge in these hotels. So see if there's a way, this is a pro tip, see if there's a way that your Uber, Lyft, or taxi can drop you off at the casino center instead of dropping you off at the lobby for the hotel. Because if they drop you off at the lobby, you have to get through the lobby, get through the casino, get through all the shops and all the restaurants, and then get through the uh, convention center. If you get dropped off at the convention center, you walk into the convention center, and you're there. It's so wonderful. You can actually do that at Mandalay Bay. Just ask them to drop you off at the shark encounter place. I forget what it's called. I'll put a link up so you can see what it looks like, but there's actually a place where they can drop you off there and they can pick you up. So see if they can drop you off there for press events, as opposed to going to Mandalay Bay's front access entry to the lobby, because you will walk for like a mile before you can actually get to the convention center. Okay, time for some more pro tips. This one is from Just a Fan David. He said, do you ship all your swag, junk, etc. back home or cram it in your luggage? Um, mm, it's kind of hard to say. It depends on the year. One year I went and I had like so much luggage. I have to, I had to ask my friend to drive it home because he drove there and then he came back to San Francisco. On another hand, I went home with nothing one year, just business cards and flyers. So I was able to just pack that into my bag. It kind of just depends on how, what your intention is when you go. If you intend to pick up every single little thing and get samples and stuff like that, then yeah, you probably want to pack an extra bag so that you can carry on an extra bag uh, when you're going home. Also, if you have a bunch of camera gear and you can't necessarily make that space, you may want to bring an extra bag for that. So what I will probably do this year is bring a large carry-on roller bag that I'll just check for free with Southwest. And then inside of that, I will have a smaller carry-on uh, that I'll just let them check with like clothes and you know bath and body stuff. Uh, so I'll, I'll receive that when I'm in Vegas. And when I leave to go home, I'll make sure to check the large bag as a, you know, checked bag with Southwest because again, Southwest lets you check bags for free. Uh, and it's one way, so I'm not too worried about them losing something. But I could put like all my samples in there and all my clothes and stuff. And then I could use the smaller carry-on bag that had my clothes in it originally put all my camera gear in that, and then I could have an extra bag for like my laptop or something on the plane. Um, so you might wanna bring an extra bag if you intend to use it. Uh, they may give out a free press bag. They usually do every year at CES. So check the press lounges as well because you may be able to get a free backpack there or a free bag. Uh, but don't quote me on that. I don't know if they're doing that this year too. El Jefe reviews. What's up, Jeff? He says, what to do about product samples? Ship, bring an extra bag. Also tips on time management and nearby food spots would be helpful. So I already covered checking my bag and I think that's what I'm gonna probably do this year. But the time management tip, yeah, plan in, in advance wherever you plan to go because it takes longer to get to wherever you're going. Nearby food spots. Um, if you want like something that's like steak and shake, Peppermill, which is very close to the LVCC, is really delicious. I love that place. Uh, if you want German food, there's a great German place that's near the airport and that is called uh, Hofbra House. It's totally touristy, but that's kind of a tradition for me and my friends to go every year. I love that place so much. Um, most of the hotels have really good restaurants in them. Vegas is known as being a foodie place, so if you intend to go there and enjoy food while you're at it, pretty much any place that you're going to go to is going to be good. You generally won't have a bad time. Uh, I usually just go with something quick and easy, so I will hit up like a burger spot and get some fries and get a salad or something like that. Um, if you want to get a beer, there's always like casino bars that are in the middle of the casino. If you want to escape and get something better, there's usually like a brew pub or some kind of like 
pub or bar atmosphere in the casino too. Uh, there's tons of nightlife as well, but I'm not really into that. I usually like to just hang out at pubs because I'm a beer drinker. Also, if anybody going is a beer drinker, hit me up because I will gladly share a beer with you and just chill and relax and hang out. So here's a good pro tip. This one is from Day Team Microphone who says, my tip after six years of trade shows, avoid paper, booklets, flyers, and catalogs. It all ends up in a trash can in the hotel room the morning you check out and fly home and that is so true. In this day and age, it is very easy to find press kits online. All of the events that I mentioned, they offer press kits that you can just download. So you don't actually have to pick up flyers from people. You can take pictures on your phone of anything that you really wanna remember, and then you can make notes on your phone too. So other than business cards, which I absolutely pick up from people because it helps me remember, and I can scan all of that directly into my contacts list through Google's OCR engine in their camera, which is amazing. Other than that, I don't really try to pick up any papers because it does all end up in the trash can. That is very true. All the companies will try to scan your badge. So when you sign up, make sure you're using an email address that you really don't care if people email you at because all of these companies will have access to that if they scan your badge. It's very annoying, but that's something I learned a little bit too late. There is a special door for media at the Las Vegas Convention Center, and this will save you time. Find the media door, find that entry, because if you go through there and you do have a backpack, which you can bring backpacks in, which is great, uh, so you have all your camera gear, they will check it and they will you know, make sure there's nothing terrible in there that you shouldn't be bringing in, and then they will give you a nice little like a little tie that you stick on your backpack that says it's already been screened and that you are press. That way you can easily slide in. Usually the line's a lot shorter to get into the press press door as opposed to the regular attendee door. So use that door. There's a bag policy on the website. I won't cover it here. You can read it for yourself. There's also a code of conduct policy. I also won't cover that here. You can read it yourself. There are press rooms inside the LVCC, the Mandalay Bay, and the Sands Convention Center. You can go in those as press. You can get a free lunch in specific ones. You can book a room if rooms are available, and they have excellent, excellent wired internet connections which is great for uploading videos. Make sure you're not depending on the hotel internet because sometimes it gonna suck, it's gonna be horrible, and you won't be able to upload videos from the hotel internet. Trust me, I've tried. Great one from Giraffe Turd. I love your screen name, by the way. They say some of the technology areas seem to have a lot of the same year to year, with some exceptions. Do you have any tips on identifying ahead of time the most innovative or unique exhibitors to visit? Uh, sometimes I get press mentions or emails from new companies that are up and coming and are ones that I want to check out. You also have access to the map ahead of time so you can Google all of these different company names if there's anything that stands out to you or that you want to check out. Also, I would just keep up with the trends throughout the year because a lot of times whatever trends you see through the year are going to occur quite a bit at CES too. Rain79 says what hotels to stay at and which ones not to, decent restaurants to entertain clients as well as save a few bucks. Things to do when you're sick of the show floor. Uh, so hotels to stay at and not to. Most of the hotels on the strip are going to be really nice. Uh, if you want a quiet room, make sure you request that because if you don't, they might put you facing the strip and then all you're going to listen to all night is drunk people. That's not fun. Um, I would not recommend the D downtown because that hotel is absolutely horrible. It's full of smoke, the rooms smell like smoke, and you have constant noise and music from outside. I hated that hotel the one year that I stayed. Um, there are some hotels right next to the Las Vegas Convention Center, and those usually get pretty pricey pretty quick, but since they're off the strip, sometimes you can save a buck. So definitely look at those because most of them are pretty nice. Uh, don't stay at Circus Circus. It's really creepy and it's old and run down. Restaurants to entertain clients at, I can't really tell you much on that. Things to do when you're sick of the show floor, just walk the strip. There's a lot to see. There's a lot of really beautiful architecture. There's some really awesome shopping as well. You can get some awesome shopping in. Uh, you can also do things outside of the city, like you can go to the desert. You can see all sorts of amazing, amazing natural formations in the desert. So that's something that a lot of people do when they fly into Vegas. Ned Suburban says, best day or time to go. So me, I fly in early and then I leave a day early just to be 
beat the rush. Who has the best swag? Again, like don't go in assuming that you'll get a bunch of swag, but you may end up walking out with like a cell phone case or something like that if you're lucky. Best after party. Uh, last year, Alienware had a really awesome party. I don't think they're doing anything like that this year, uh, but if they do, of course, I'll post about it. If there's any awesome parties, I'll post about theirs. I know that there's an award show that I'm intending to go to, so I don't know how that's gonna be. I've never been. What is essential if you are blogging or making a video? Uh, definitely bring your chargers, definitely bring extra batteries, and bring a light because not all of these booths know how to light their products efficiently. Follow Ram says, how would a up and coming vlogger get a press pass? Uh, just work at it. You you have to work at it make sure that you hit those requirements to get that press badge. Otherwise, see if you can be hired on as a freelancer for the week with any other company. Uh, if you do have that ability, then you could get in with a freelancer badge for a press badge, and then you could do your own work as well when you're off the clock. So that's always an option too. Lastly is how to stay healthy and how to stay safe. So first off, healthy. Uh, casino smoke sucks, it's everywhere. I don't know why they allow people to still smoke indoors. Actually, I do, and it's because they want people to stay inside and make a profit off of them, and they don't want them to know what time it is, so they allow you to smoke out inside as much as you want. Drink lots of water because it is the desert and there is casino smoke, so you are going to like lose your voice by the end of the week, so keep drinking water, stay hydrated. It's easy to get dehydrated in that kind of atmosphere. Uh, hot tea with honey or lemon is something that I will always preach by because that always keeps my voice feeling good. Wash your hands, carry hand sanitizer. Carry two things of little travel size hand sanitizers. That way you can actually keep yourself from picking up any kind of flu or any kind of con crud while you are there. Make sure you are taking breaks, eat healthy, and also ensure that you are getting enough sleep. There was one year that I went and I edited all my own files and I would stay up until 4 a.m. each day just trying to get the edit done and trying to get it exported and uploaded and it was a horrendous nightmare so I am never doing that again. I'm never going to edit my own content at CES because it's just way too time consuming so now what I do instead is I upload all that data over to somebody else, she takes care of the edit and then gives it back to me so that I can take care of the upload and just check it over and make sure there's no mistakes, which there never are because she's amazing. Bring a humidifier. Sounds weird, but having a humidifier in one of those dry room hotels in Las Vegas, because it is the desert, it is dry, having a humidifier is life-changing, it's amazing. If you don't have access to a humidifier, you can also fill up your tub with hot water to create that steam, or you can fill up your sinks too with hot water to create the same steam. That gives you a little bit of moisture in the air so that you don't deal with that dry, dry atmosphere. Livid Java says, if you need to bring any sort of device, how should one secure it? Uh, what small devices do you recommend bringing? Maybe a bit more about personal security. Thank you. I'm so glad that you asked that. Uh, livid Java. So first off, how should you secure your own devices? Turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and NFC. You are going to be in a room with hundreds of thousands of other people, so you don't know what they are up to or if they're malicious. One time I did run into an FBI investigator who was there trying to track somebody down who was some kind of like international criminal. So there's always the potential that those kind of people will be there. So make sure that you are turning off any kind of data on here that you don't want Want people to access and that includes Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC, um, even location data if you want to turn that off as well. Same thing with your laptop, turn off all the Wi-Fi capabilities on this. Uh, if you do need to use a hotspot then use the hotspot but as soon as you are done turn off the Wi-Fi connection on here. Keep it in airport mode. Uh, if you do need to use internet to upload anything, uh, usually I will use the hardwired internet which is just in the press room and I will also run my own VPN as well. That hardwired press room internet is just accessible to the press room. So that's it. And everybody there, 
I'm just gonna assume they're all doing the same kind of job and nobody is interested in my content. They're just interested in getting their own content up. People are flying in and out of that place, so it's never something that I've had an issue with. As far as personal security goes, it's pretty much the same as you do anywhere else that you are going. Always keep your personal belongings with you unless they are locked up in your hotel room. You can use hotel room locking devices like a door stop or you can use like the door jam locker, any kind of devices like that to ensure that nobody's trying to get into your room while you're in there. Uh, also make sure that you're locking the door behind you, that nobody's following you to your hotel room. When you check into your hotel, make sure that the uh, hotel front desk employee does not say your room number out loud. That's always a dead giveaway that they don't know what they're doing because that is a policy. They should be running it. Never say a hotel room number out loud. That's a huge, huge concern and it violates your privacy in so many ways. Pretty much anything that that you would normally do when you're traveling, just ensure that you're doing it here too. Lastly, a few more things that you should absolutely bring. Business cards, companies will ask for them. They aren't going to follow you on Instagram or follow you on Twitter. They are going to ask you for a business card. Uh, hand sanitizer again, deodorant again, and a hood or an umbrella. Last year we actually had a bunch of rain and it totally ruined my hair and my hair got super, super gross. But uh, if we have rain, check the weather. You might want to bring a little travel size umbrella or a hood. Oh man, that was a long video. I think I'm done with my CES for noobs video. I hope that it was helpful as well and that you have a wonderful time at CES. And if you are an influencer, if you are a YouTuber, let me know if you're gonna be there, if you're interested in doing any sort of collab because I do have a little bit of open time in my schedule. Uh, I do have a bunch of meetings that I have to run between, but there is a couple of days in there that I am leaving completely free to walk the show floor and to talk to people, and I do have a suite on the show floor. Uh, I know that sounds a little crazy, but I do have a suite reserved for the company that I'm working with as well as myself. So I can interview people in that room or we can do collaborations in that room. It does get a little loud, so bring your microphone because it is on the show floor, but there's a room and we can use it and it's private. It's wonderful. You can sit down, there's chairs. It's such a, such a nice little change from previous years when I had nowhere to sit. If this was helpful, if you have any other questions, if you have concerns about CES, hit me up down below. Again, this is my 11th year going, so I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. And thank you so much for checking out the channel. Like and subscribe if you're interested in more travel and technology with an emphasis on security and privacy. Again, my name is Shannon Morse. Thank you to my s'mores. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.